Can you just lift up your hands and worship the Lord tonight? Somebody say amen. amen. Have you wondered why even in dead the bones of Elisha was still resurrecting the dead? It's the covenant that sustains that bone. The covenant does not just dwell in the body, it dwells in the bones. Have you wondered? Ah, Baba. Shake into rebos. Kale kanda yaka. Ye kante lebos take area hunter. Jesus. Have you wondered why? God refused Satan, the body of Moses. It didn't matter whether Moses was being punished for disobedience. God will not allow Satan to take his body. God took him away on that mountain. It is because of the covenant. It is it is because of the narrative between God and Moses. The understanding. What understanding does God have with you? As an individual. What kind of alignment, altar, have you built in your private life between you and him? That is what defines the quality of life that you live on earth. And I'm going to show you things. I repeat, 
it is what defines the quality of life. Ah, tonight, anything that is eating up your life, I command its power to break away from your body now. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. You ask yourself, is the covenant so powerful? The covenant is everything. It is not just powerful. It is what qualifies you for eternal life. It is what qualifies you to exist on earth. That is how strong it makes it simpler for you to comprehend. If you remember that I said the covenant means contract. It's a contract that you and somebody agrees between you and a higher person. It makes you to understand it better. That the covenant is executed by blood. It is the blood that executes it. It is the blood that draws the boundary. Ah! I don't know what is happening to somebody's bones here. I don't know what had eaten up, up what infirmity had eaten up that bone, in, that your bone. But today, I see the Lord turning it around and healing it now. I rebuke that infirmity in the name of Jesus. I command it out of your flesh. In the name of Jesus. Can you just stretch that leg? You say, Father, let the covenant speak in my bones. Because I carry it in my body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? Promotion be released now. Let your prosperity be released now. Can you shout by the blood of my covenant? Why would don't forget life is in the blood? Why would the Bible say by the blood of my covenant? I'm just quoting scripture. I'm not saying anything that is sensational. I'm, we read it yesterday in Zechariah 9-11. By the blood of thy covenant. By the blood 
you need to begin to demand by the blood of my covenant in Christ Jesus. I demand. I am not begging. I am not appealing. Somebody say, I demand. Now, I want you to think about something you want to demand from the Lord today. By the blood of your covenant. I want you to think of something you want to demand even from Satan. By the blood of your covenant. If you want him to leave something, you tell him by the blood of my covenant. I demand. I have an identity card. By that identity card, I deserve respect. I deserve release. I deserve deliverance. It is the covenant. Can you begin to demand? Open your mouth. By the blood. What do you want? Itemize them. By the blood of your covenant. Shaken to reba. Yakele bobo se kuntara. I demand. You want to demand for your health? Your healing right now? Demand it by the blood of my covenant. In the name of Jesus, receive now that which you have asked from the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release the power of the blood to break every power of principalities that have curtailed your destiny, that are affecting your request. Today, in the name of Jesus, the Lord rebuke every one of them. I command them out of your situations. I command your release tonight. In the name of Jesus, I didn't hear somebody shout amen. I want you to be seated for a moment. Can you put Deuteronomy chapter 5 on the screen? Chapter 5 verse 2. How comes that he was dead yet his bones were still resurrecting the dead? How comes? Look, the most important words in this covenant, divine covenant, is the contract. And I told you, the contract is made up of words. We are coming to that. And the other is the blood that testifies. Is the testament of the blood. The testimony of the blood that seals the covenant. And Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 2. And I'll read 2 and 3 and maybe 4. It says, the Lord our God made a covenant with us. It's a personal thing. It's between, that's why I told you today, in your fast, can you repeat, redo your covenant? Don't take it for granted in these last days. You are either having the mark or you don't have his mark. You are either his own or you are not his own. What you take for granted is what will wound you. Be sure your papers are correct. He says, the Lord our God made a covenant with us, where? In Horeb. Verse 3. The Lord made not this covenant with everybody. He didn't make it with our fathers. But with me, 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 Emmanuel Kure, with us. Even us who are all of us. What? Here, alive, this day. The covenant had power to keep them Without the covenant, you have no claim legally. The covenant had power to do what? Keep them. It says they went through the wilderness with all the beasts and the animals and the hunger and the famine and the suffering. They were sustained by the covenant. All of us. Our fathers didn't have this kind of covenant. So they couldn't enjoy this kind of grace. But in Christ, we have the covenant. Can you put Numbers chapter 10, 33? Put it there. Let me take you so that your understanding can be full. The covenant is a witness of heaven. Actually, in the tabernacle in heaven, 
The scroll of the covenant is at the middle of the tabernacle, his testament. The cup, it's the witness of God himself. How many of you know that you are a God matter? When I say God matter, eh, you don't exist by yourself. In the beginning when you were built up, it was his breath that made you a living soul. So you are a God matter. Are you following what? Because it is his breath. It is an aspect of his existence that is making you walk like that. You see, scientists have been able to build everything about the human body. They can duplicate everything except the breath. That's all they are waiting to conquer. But a face, an arm, a leg, they can produce extra for you. But they cannot produce the breath. They, can, they even have found ways of making the bones to grow. But they cannot what? This is the only thing that will make them God and they will never get there. Because that substance comes from the fire. It is the God matter, the breath. When he breathed into us, he made us a living soul. That is the way the Bible puts it. Look at it. Shall we all read that so that today your journey will change forever? Anybody obstructing your journey, let the Lord write them for judgment. I said, let the Lord register them for judgment. Can you say, Baba, register? Let the Lord register them for judgment. Anybody is an abomination to obstruct your road. It's a pilgrimage on earth. He didn't he put you here. He put the breath there. You see, the covenant entails the fact that I created you for a purpose. If you will give me back my body that I created to fulfill the purpose for which I put it on earth, then this covenant will carry you to that place and make you finish well. Those are the terms of the covenant. It's very simple. Who created himself here? Let him raise his hand. If you didn't create yourself, your mother did not create you. He said, my father and my mother created me. Ah. <laughs> now, let's look at that scripture. And they departed from the mount of the Lord three days. Shall we read it together? And they departed from the mount of the Lord. Three days journey. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in the three days journey. <laughs> look at the reason. To search out a resting place. What is the work? What is the reason for the covenant? It is to search out a resting place for you, for your life. It says, the Bible says in Chronicles, there is a place that I have ordained. And it is to that place I will bring you unto. And there is a clause there that I like. It says, and the sons of wickedness will not be able to touch you. The work of the ark of covenant. That means the covenant is supposed to provide a vehicle. Or it is a vehicle by which God directs your path. To your original destiny. Look, let me tell you something. Yes, there are people who were ordained to be martyrs. There were those who were born you know, for a purpose. And they know they were born like that. There are those who have made themselves eunuch for a purpose. But let me tell you, everything, even when you suffer, it is bringing you to your rest. The covenant will be there. Ah, Jesus suffered affliction. Did the father leave him? Even in hell, when Jesus went into hell and preached to spirits, was the father was not was the father not there? The Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead shall quicken your mortal flesh. It's all is the demand of the covenant. That is why I use the word demand when I pray when I'm talking about covenant. I demand. By the blood, you demand. You don't ask. You are not begging. It's not a negotiation. 
Does your son beg to be your son? Even if you reject him, he's still your son. Tell him you disown him or he's still your son. He still has your nose, he has your eyes. Your disowning is useless. You are just ridiculing yourself. You are mocking yourself. The covenant is God giving you his life to carry you and bring you to that place. And that is why the covenant is sealed by an oath. Apart from the death of Jesus Christ, the Bible says God said, I swear. God himself had to swear to reassure our flimsy humanity that he will keep his word. I swear. Ah, Baba, let your oath eat through our bodies today and take away that which is imperfect and bring in that which is perfect. Today, any of you who needs a spare part in your body now, let that part begin to grow up now. I call forth that. I demand that by the covenant that you have with Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is why I ask you to fast. That is why I ask you to fast. That's why I ask you to consecrate yourself. Because there are things the Holy Spirit will be doing naturally tonight. You don't need a struggle. Because your covenant is renewed. Your covenant is repaired. It becomes easier for the Holy Spirit to make his spirit in you translate your physical body into the perfect purpose for which it was ordained. Now, what is the work of the covenant? It is to search for you a resting place. You just read that. Where your soul will be at rest. You know, David fought wars for most of his life. But there was a time in his life even in the midst of those battles, that he had peace, according to the Bible, all around him. All his borders were at rest. When you come to your place of rest, your borders will not allow anything to worry. It's the mystery of the covenant. It is a mystery. Now, everything that God has created we are ordained to feed the covenant, to service the covenant. I want to repeat. All of God's creation, including Mr. Chair, including the air you breathe, the car you ride, they are meant to service the covenant. Including angels, all the creatures. You know, next year is very important. It's 2016, it's the number six year. Do you know that on the sixth day, God created about six things. Apart from Adam, apart from Eve, he created creeping things. He created the beast, and he made one of them their head. Adam became the head of all these things that he created. Number six is the number of creation. Uh, next year, Everything that was an idea that you have done prototype for, God will breathe into it and make it rule over the earth. The people I'm talking to, they are listening to me. Now, nobody will look at your creativity. They don't worry about you. Continue to perfect it. Because the season of its manifestation is very close at the door. I release the angels to open it for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And that is a door say the Lord. There are those of you that are carrying pregnancies of revelations and visions you have begun to build in the physical and they are laughing at you. They are laughing at you. Ah! Next year they will serve you. Tomorrow they will say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Covenant. Can you say, my heavenly, my heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, name of Jesus Christ give, me the as a give me the covenant as a vehicle. 
Let the covenant bring me. Let the covenant bring me to my place of rest. I enter into that agreement with you. I am sorry for my stubbornness in the past. For arguing with you in the past. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Why am I reading that scripture? You see, I'm taking you very fast in the thing because we are going somewhere. If you look at John chapter 14 and you read verse 22. Can you put 22? We will read 22, 23, maybe 24. 22 to 24. Judah said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? You know, he will manifest himself to those he has an agreement with. How is it that you will manifest yourself unto us, not unto the world? <laughs> and what did Jesus answer? Verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, what will he do? He will keep my words. Words. The contract is founded on words. The contract is a word covenant. It is your word you give to him. And he gives you back his word. Why? Because he himself is the word. So the word ought to be founded on him. His existence is as a word. So it is a word covenant. And that is sufficient for him. Even so when you need that, you buy God, I give you my word. I am sorry, I repent. I won't do it again. He picks it from your hands and he says, register it. He won't do it again. He takes you as seriously as that. He believes you and he says, I give you my word. If you keep your word, I will keep my word. What you have never drum, dreamt of, I will make you that thing. Did you hear what I said? That is what makes it a contract. An exchange. That is what makes it a contract. That is why sex is a contract. There is an exchange of two lives, living beings. Both in the fluid, in everything, in the sperm. There is an exchange of two contracts mixing. So there is a marriage. And that is why it is meant to be between two married people. It's a contract. The words are exchange of marriage. That is why in Hosea chapter 2, the Bible says, and I will betroth you to myself. If you read from verse 19, I will betroth you to myself in holiness, in righteousness. It's written like that. If you read 19 to 22, and he said, he will make the heavens to obey you. Actually, it is connected to the heavens serving you. I am coming to that level very soon. I'm just connecting scriptures for you, taking you gradually. So you see the spirit in the contract, the road of the contract. I used to be a teacher, a lecturer. So I know how to carry you gently to understand everything. My students never fail. They are the ones at the airport now making it easier for me to cross the airport. Did you hear what I said? My former students in the north are all over Nigeria now. And they make it easier for me to cross the airport. Because they pass exams because of the way I taught. And so today you must not fail tonight's exam. Because it will change your destiny forever. I didn't hear somebody say amen. Now, you will notice that the Bible says in that Hosea chapter 2, of course, if you start from 17, he says he will wipe away the names of Balaam. Then he goes on to break how he will begin to wipe all the names of Balaam. In verse uh, uh, 18, uh, 17, and 4, I will take away the names of Balaam. But verse 18 says, and in that day will I make a covenant for them. We are still talking about covenant. With the beast of the field, the beast of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, and with the creeping things of the ground, and I will break the bow and the sword and the battle. Why? Because of the covenant. That is why you can now say no weapon fashioned against me can prosper because it's founded on an agreement. In case you don't know why we are doing all this, you call it fanatism. I want to help you understand this fanatism. There is a sense to it. It makes sense. So if you see me 
operating contrary to the world like a madman, there is a sense to my madness. It has a sequence. There's an attachment in that madness. It's because a Christian has not sat down to explain the madness for you to understand. In case you are a skeptic seated here. So you can understand the sequence in scripture. Look at what the Bible says there. He said because of that covenant, he said he will break the bar. That means on your journey to the place he has prepared, anything that stands in the way, it will break it. Yeah. Do you understand? Sir? On your journey to where he is, if he's taking you to be a president, many people will die because of you so that you can become president. Many people will be retired because of you before their time so that you can become president or managing director or CEO. Somebody has to be sacrificed somewhere because the person insists you cannot get there. So when the person says over his dead body, let him begin to die now. He should not waste your time at all. Anybody who has said over my dead body, may God answer their prayer this year. Say, I am preaching radical vow. You know, radical vow. For Abraham to enter into the promise of that covenant that God promised, his father had to die. Go and read your Bible. It was when his father died, meaning that it was the obedience of his father that slowed him down. It was when his father died that Abraham rose up to move into the promise. For some of you here, somebody truly has to die on this journey. So let them begin to go quickly. I don't want to become what I was ordained to become at the ripe old age where it will be useless to me. I want to be young and strong to enjoy it. Somebody say, now! Let the covenant speak on my behalf. Anyone defying the covenant in the name of Jesus, be cut off now. Be taken out of my way. In the name of Jesus. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. No, let's look at it again. Take it back to Hosea. Because I know I am talking to very highly educated people. So I'm not going to do you biribiri in the spirit. You will see it practically as it is working. It, as I'm talking, some people's bones are getting corrected. Somebody's knees are being healed now. Somebody say, it is in the covenant. Because that is how it was, it, it, it was supposed to be. Look at that scripture. He says he will break the bar. Anything after the covenant has to be broken. Then look at 19. He says, and I will betroth you. The covenant is a marriage. He said, and I will betroth thee unto me forever. Not, that is why what you receive from the covenant is eternal life. I'm trying to explain the issue of eternal life. You, say, you, you, you Christians are too proud. You say you have eternal life. How do you know tomorrow? It is in the covenant. The covenant gives me eternal life. He says, and I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercy. Verse 20. He says, and I will even, not the word even, betroth thee unto me in faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. Even when you are unfaithful, the father is still faithful. In faithfulness, he says, and thou shalt know the Lord. That is when you will know my character. Look at verse 21. He said, hey, 
It is when we have that kind of relationship, then something else is going to happen. I will give you a taste of the powers of heaven. He says, and it shall come to pass in that day when we have this kind of covenant, I will hear your prayer. I will hear you say the Lord. I will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth because of you. God starts hearing the heavens because of you. He starts hearing the earth because of you. Can you go to verse 22? And the earth shall hear the corn from your hands that you sow. We are coming to that. And the wine and the oil. And they shall all of them hear Jezreel. In the Bible, Jezreel is the, is, is, is the addition of the covenant. It's, you can remove Jezreel and put him on here. His covenant was with Jezreel. And this is talking about Jezreel. The end result of all the here, I hear, here, 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 is Emmanuel Kure. It's you. Can somebody say it is me? Say he is talking about me. Say OF. You go hear me by force. This my chair where they sit down. If anybody has cursed my seat, anywhere in the spirit or on the earth, that I will not sit on a high chair, that I will not be a great person. Today, by this chair that I sit today, let the covenant of the Son of God in me, the blood of Jesus Christ, break that curse now. And release me to my destiny because it is the work of the covenant to bring me to my destiny in the name of Jesus I receive power against every principality and power in Jesus name can somebody wave and shout amen Understanding the enjoying of the divine covenant. You are beginning to understand how it works. So you have to take it gradually like that, sequentially. Now, take it back to that scripture. Because the scripture is not done with us in Hosea. It says, and they shall hear Jezreel. Now, look at what 23 says. It is when you are complete like this that you can manifest in the earth. 23 says, and I will sow her unto me in the earth. I will sow Jezreel unto me in the earth. Uh -huh. And I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, thou art my people. And they shall say, thou art So are you a castaway? They have been humiliating you. Life has been humiliating you. Your family has been calling you all kinds of names. Bastard, non-entity, vegetable, you know, get sense. This covenant has changed your identity. You say, you, you will never marry. Ah, you will never marry. Today, that yoke is broken. He says, and I will sow her after I have prepared with this covenant unto me, she will answer to me, her righteousness shall be by me her redemption, her justification her drinking of water shall be by me, her inheritance shall be by me, he says and I will sow her unto me in the earth, so the earth will treat her with mercy by me he says and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy and I will say to them which were not my people, thou art my people. And they shall say, thou art my God. You see, that is why Jeremiah said, O earth, 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 hear ye the word of the Lord. Because from that time, the earth became subject to him. The earth answered to him. The earth will do everything he wants done because of the covenant. Let me take you to the next level of this scripture. I'm taking you gradually. Judges chapter 5. Judges chapter 
25. I think it's verse 20, 26. Let me, let me just look at it. Judges. Since I started, I've not had time to look at my notes. Because if I followed the notes, it will take longer. I have the notes in my head. <laughs> that is making it easier. Ah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Great is thy faithfulness. put her hand to the nail because next year is in year of the nail when God will nail down all your enemies so let me not enter to that because I'll get excited carry you away by excitement because we are talking the covenant let's stay in the place of the covenant let's stay in the place of the covenant I'll give you the verses I want you to concentrate on in a minute let, me, let the point remain listen because this is very important that is why when when Deborah rose up to go to war because all of creation is attached to the covenant to obey like we saw in Hosea chapter 2 the earth, the heavens he, and remember in verse 18 he says and I will make covenant with the beast so it includes the beast on your behalf that is why if any Babalao has slaughtered a beast in order to control your life and call your name specifically, right now let that name begin to worry him. Because the beast is supposed to serve the divine purpose in your life, not become the instrument for your destruction. Can liberty begin to take place in your bodies now? Every cause disappear. Why? Because revelation has come into your spirit. There is an understanding that it is your right. It is no longer a confession. It is part of the agreement with God. It is part of your... I'm giving you the terms of this agreement. I'm showing you gradually. This is what is in the agreement. This is what you enjoy. The beast. Now, the, I don't know why God chose... Sometimes God chooses the woman to teach us life's lessons. Deborah stood up and the whole of creation stood with her. The man was afraid. The man so much told her, he said, look, madam, if you want me to go to, now you hear God, me I no hear her. If you want me to go for this battle, oh, you must stand by me. Because God will not allow you die, he will not allow me die. An arrow that is coming for the two of us has to pass because you are here. God will make bypass for you. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Deborah said, I agree. Ah! Deborah got angry after she had agreed. He said, you, because you doubted the Lord, the victory shall not be by your hand. It shall be by a woman like me. It shall be by another person. You who despise women, God will teach you a lesson tonight. He said, the, the, this victory shall be by another man, a, a woman, not by you. You think it's generals that win battle? We will tell you it is spirits that win battle. Today, let your battle change. So Deborah stepped out with the general. And when she stepped out, who followed her? The heavens followed her. The stars descended in their courses, their regiments, from their generals downward. The stars descended to fight. Did you see that in your Bible? Then the waters will sit down calmly 
and wait for the army to get close to the river banks. And suddenly the waters will rush and overflow its boundaries and capture the legs and pull them back into the water and swallow them. Waters were fighting. Angels were fighting. The earth were fighting. Tonight, I command all infirmity in you to disappear. I release this hand of the Lord in the covenant to speak for you. Now, let me take you to the place. Now, put it, let's put on our battle garments. Let's put on our battle garments. Before we go there, let me teach you the other lesson. I'm beginning to come into the servicing of the covenant. You will notice that not everybody was invited to that battle. And not everybody fought a battle. Yet they all fought together. To surround her, she chose the tribe of Issachar. Issachar didn't go to fight physical battle. If you listen, if you know the word of the Lord, it says Issachar people were people who understood the times and they knew how, what, how to interpret what to do. That means the Issachar people had the wisdom of the gods. If you remember the language that was used for Daniel, for he has the wisdom of the gods. It means for you to make your covenant succeed, have people around you that have the wisdom of the gods. People who talk your covenant. People who talk like God. Surround yourself with them. Then she surrounded herself with another second group of people, the same woman. The tribe of Zebulun. Now, those ones were warriors. If you look at that scripture, they went to war with Nephtali. All of them went to fight the physical battle with arms. But then there was a group in that tribe whose speciality was the pen. They fought with their virus. Now, when they say they fought with the pen, then it means they must be deep thinkers. Anybody who oppresses the pen is a deep thinker. Otherwise, you won't succeed with your pen. Not everybody who writes, writes beautiful stuff that everybody will want to read. There is a lot of nonsense in the market there, in the name of books. But there is a book you will pick, you can't drop it. It just connects with you. It just captures you. Now, that was Neftali. They were books you could not drop. They were deep thinkers. So, she had people who were prophetic, who could descend the times and tell her what to do. Then she had people who say, ah, Deborah, Farabale, mm. slow down. Wait for them to come. Don't be too fast to go. Why? Because the law of science says this, 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 does this. This attracts this. So you wait, let them come closer. Draw them. And then we will cut them off. They were the ones that gave her the counsel of the Lord. Ah, didn't you see what happened to Absalom? He had two wise men around him, Hushai and Ahitohel. Ah, David had the prophet Nathan, very wise people. Say, king, thou art the one, O king. You took somebody's wife that did not belong to you, thou art the one. And the man told him so wisely that he couldn't do anything about it. But to submit to God's will. You must surround, you must fit the altar, your covenant. With not only people of the covenant, but people who understand the covenant. You must surround yourself with them. I repeat. Hello? If you have those Christians around you who don't even know the Bible deep, make them your peripheral peri friends. Make the ones who know it deeper your closer friends. Because in ordinary conversation, you will receive instruction. And they won't even know you are getting instruction. How many of you understand the wisdom of God? Deborah, they were riding in that chariot. She was not the only one. She was there with Barak, the general. And then she was there with representatives of Nephtali and Issachar. I mean, Zebulun and Issachar. 
They rode on that thing. So they were conversing together. They were discussing the battle together. They will laugh together, crack their jokes together. But even in their joke was wisdom. Number one, that is how you feed the altar. That is how you sustain it. Then number two, in sustaining the altar, in feeding it, apart from getting wise men who know how to interpret it, who know how to turn it for battle for you. They may not go to the battle with you, but they know how to turn it into battle. Like yesterday, I told you, declare fast and just do the things we taught yesterday. That is the wisdom of the gods, in quotes. If you understand what I mean. I taught you how to make the contract so that the father can operate with you. And I told you that even me renewed mine yesterday before I came here. Because we have been fasting for a while now. Even today we are in a fast. In our ministry. If the fast does not break yokes, then it is not a fast. Get those people around you. They are fewer by the day because fewer people are reading scriptures. In fact, there are more reading books than scriptures. And the books are adding more carnality these days. The books are just story stories and storytelling. Some books you read them, you can, leave, you can hardly find three scriptures. They speak nice things, they sound to the air, but it's poison to the soul. Be careful what kind of books you read. It's not every book you should be buying. It's not every book you should believe. Many of them are deceits of hell, including books on marriage. There are some of them you read now, they will send you to hell. Let me not get into that. Again, so that I don't get distracted. The second major point that goes in servicing the altar It's found in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Can you put it there? There is a big word there. It's that word that carries everything, or that carries most of the things, that services the altar. Romans 12, 1. Shall we all read it? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable. Now, many of us, when we read this scripture, we emphasize the holiness part. You think it was written for holiness. No. The holiness is part of it. But no, you will be missing it. The focus of this sentence is your body. and sacrifice body sacrifice he says by the mercies of god that he present your bodies your body is a focus your body you know why the covenant is made with your soul and body when you knelt down today to pray was it not your body that went to the ground it was your body when jesus says i will come and live inside of you and eat with you and we'll go back to that john Chapter 14, very soon. Back to the scripture we started reading that we left. Then you will understand this one better. Your body is the vehicle that carries the spirit. Just like that chariot that the Holy Ghost, that God's spirit, that carried God's spirit in Ezekiel chapter 1. If you've read the Ezekiel chapter, God was inside the wheel. And the wheel was carrying him from place covered by cherubims. He was in the midst of them. Your body is a chariot that carries the spirit of your covenant. It is the ark that has the holy of holies inside. And God is telling you how to handle that ark, your own physical body. If you look, read Hebrews chapter 8 verse 2, you can be right now, I'm, reading, I'm calling a lot of scriptures today. In Hebrews 8 2, Jesus, the Bible says Jesus is the minister in his sanctuary, in your body, your body that is sanctuary. 
Corinthians says, know ye not that your temple is the temple of the Holy Ghost and that the Holy Ghost dwells in you. So Jesus is the minister in his, in fact, the Bible does not call it in your body, in your sanctuary. The Bible says in his sanctuary. It is now his body by covenant. You ceded it to him the day you invited him in. It's no longer, that's why you can say, it is no longer I that live it, but Christ that lives in me. You lost control. The day you invited him in. Now, when you absolutely submit to the terms of those covenant, you become a God. You become translated into another being. That is when you can control the heavens and control the earth. When you rise, the heavens will rise with you. Listen to this tape later and listen to it carefully so you can understand the terms of this covenant. For me, most Christians don't understand the basics of our fellowship. And I plead with you, please give me a copy of the tape also. Let me use it to pray, renew covenants. It's important because I'm giving you the terms of covenant. So what does that scripture say? It says, it, 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 it talks there very clearly that your bodies, put it back there please. No, it's not the eight true. I know I got it right. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord, uh, I beseech you, that's good. Listen, it says, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Bodies, living sacrifice, those are the two words. Now, let me tell you, it is the sacrifice you make that empowers your body. It is the sacrifice that your body makes that empowers the covenant. I want to repeat. So when you come early in the morning to church and you are not the official sweeper of the church and you sweep the whole church and you take time, you get water, polish the ground, you know, you, you, you go and ask the pastor, what kind of oil do you use to polish this kind of material? He tells you, you buy that oil without telling him. And you polish this floor, your body is making a sacrifice. Your covenant is coming alive. Your covenant is increasing. You are adding power to it. You are making the angels take notice of you. Nobody begged you to do that. It's not even your official work. That is how you service the altar of the covenant. You sweep the floor. Nobody asked you. You, you. you came in and you found out that the chairs were dirty. Instead of grumbling, look at these people. They are very ineffective. There are those who are paid to do this work. They are not doing it. I'm going to report to the elders. God made you to see so that you can get a blessing. Service your altar. Take, go and get something. Start cleaning. The man that does that thing will either be ashamed when he sees you cleaning eventually or if he's foolish enough to think, ah, thank God for this uh, Agbero that wants to do any kind of work that he has not been invited. Okay, do it, I will rest. Hey, God will retire that man that day. Because God gave you a chance to prosper. That is why you will notice that the dickens and the dickinesses in the book of Acts that the apostles chose almost prospered more than their augurs who were given to only prayer and fasting and the teaching of the word. How do I know Philip disappeared and reappeared? Did Paul ever disappear? He doesn't even know how to fly. It takes a lot of confidence for God to make you disappear. You know, there are Muslims who believe that I disappear. I don't disappear a couple. Because they have tried many times to kill me, it was impossible. They will see me enter the house. And then they will call the remaining gangs to come. <laughs> the eagle has landed. And then while the gang is coming, when they now invade the house, they find out that the eagle is not there. Are they blind? They saw him come in. They almost killed their colleagues who told them I was inside. They didn't know 
that at that moment when they were making the phone call and saying, come, he just rode it in with this, 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 and they are pacing around, the Holy Ghost told me, ride out. And I would just drive out, and they would come in their troops and invade the house, and I will not be there. They will pieces everything, dig the ground, thinking I have underground bunkers. Jesus is my underground. May this be your testimony today in Jesus' name. It came to the point where I didn't celebrate birthdays. I still hardly celebrate it because I'm not used to it. They had to force me to celebrate my 50th birthday some years ago. By force. I was not used to it. And I was blushing when people were saying all kinds of things on the pulpit. People were dancing on my behalf. What are they doing? It's not, it's not my way. It's not my lifestyle. I felt very odd. I felt like man, a man clothed in odd garments. It, you are celebrating me. I have never settled down enough in my heart to enjoy celebration. Because there's always one person pursuing after my life or fighting with me or arguing with me. And I must stand on the truth of the covenant. And the truth of the covenant has kept me alive. Protected me. So much they think I am a spirit. That is what the covenant turns you into. Invisible. Defendable. Dependable. I release that power now. To take you out of the hands of your enemies. In the name of Jesus Christ. They will search for you and they will not find you. In the name of Jesus. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. Those guys were sweepers. The Stevens, the Phillips. They were sweepers. They had power in the world. They died even earlier than the Ogas because they became the bigger targets. Satan said, these people are more dangerous than the other people. My friend, you deacon, what testimony do you have in heaven? The pastor has to pray for you so that you can do your work. You don't know it's a privilege to be, it, it, it is, your body has been given an official chance to service the altar of your covenant. You want to be pastor. My friend, even when they make you pastor and you are not ready, refuse it. Let the spirit ride you into it. Oh, let me not get into that. Like I said, I get tempted to get distracted sometimes by some of these things. But there are patterns that are not patterns of the covenant. I'm talking about servicing the covenant. Then let me tell you the other way, apart from the service of your body. That's why the Bible calls it that this is your reasonable service. It's not just holiness. So apart from service, and service includes, ah, they need another altar. And God opens, you told God, if you open a gate, whatever is your need in the church, I will meet it. Ah. Then there is a need now. You meet it immediately. Somebody does not need to write you a letter or command you. It's because there is a need. In our ministry, our members are beginning to get to that level where they give without me asking. Not to me, to the needs of the ministry. I just come back and I hear salaries are paid. I don't know which spirits paid it. But if you come from the north where I come from, where money is scarce, then when you pay so many millions, you will know it must be the Holy Spirit. Here, sometimes you don't need the Holy Spirit to pay salaries. I mean, I can't have so many shell members here and then you tell me I'm praying for salary. Pray to where? What are they doing? Me, it is these widows that I have. They can't pay salaries. God, through the covenant, has taught them how to not only take care of themselves but to be sustained by the Spirit, fed by the Spirit, that these widows are beginning to build their own houses. Those are the laws of covenant. Today you have nobody to help you. I release the power of God in the covenant. Yeah. To build for you houses. Yeah. To buy for you your cars. Yeah. So that you can walk like any other king. Because you are a king. Your yoke is broken today. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear somebody say amen. In those days, it was painful for us in the ministry. When we were yet growing, when we were yet teaching people rudimentary things and they would argue and kick. But when the Holy Spirit caught up with them and they began to grow through teachings like this, they began to do it, they service their covenant. And many of them are invisible now. Many of them are top people now. But we started years ago with them when they were walking the streets. They just got transformed. Many of them now go into all the highest functions any of you goes to. We don't need to big them. But number two, God raised other men outside the ministry. In fact, some of them are the ones that are doing the greater things. God will always service his covenant. So even if all the shell people here refuse to contribute to the church, God will still raise men. If the pastor is faithful. Now it will be now depend on the covenant of the pastor and his leadership. If they service the covenant, supply must come. Did you hear what I said? Yes, oh, I have my pastors riding in jeeps. It didn't come because we bought official jeep cars for them. We don't have the money in the ministry to buy a jeep car for anybody. Mm. All the jeeps I ride, the ministry did not buy it. Otherwise, the ministry will fall. Did you hear what I said? They were bought by individuals outside the ministry for most whom God commanded. First of all, God has commanded. Somebody came to me this year and said, God commanded me to give you this much of money, plenty of money. And he said, God said, you must use it to buy a thing for yourself, not the ministry. Otherwise, let me keep my money. Because if he didn't say that, it is going to the ministry. I have a lot of work to do, so, and I have enough to take care of me daily that all these extras, I take them back there to the altar. To service the altar. He said, no, this is not for the altar. It's for you. Governor John woke up one day. He, he used to send money he thought he was sending to me. He was sending out of the ministry. I didn't know from behind me and giving them. He would send it because he didn't say it was for the ministry or for me. I would think he is sowing a covenant on the altar. I would take the whole thing and give it to the altar. One year, on the, the last year when he was living, actually last year, the last full years, he discovered that all the monies were going to the altar by a mistake. He sent somebody to bring the money to me as usual. The person didn't find me, so took it to our administrator that the administrator should keep it for me and give. He said, no, even if you give it to Oga, it will end up in my office. So you have come to the right place. Let me write you your receipt. And he wrote the receipt in the name of the room. He said, no, write the receipt in the name of Emmanuel Kure. It was not meant for ministry. The man said, he has always brought, okay, take it to him. It will end up with us. Ah, so he quickly called the guy. He said, Oga, this is the trouble I have here. So the, I was overseas. He called me there. He said, come. You mean all these years, some of these monies I sent, they went to the ministry? Ah, he said, no wonder. There were things I was expecting of you I didn't see. He knew my needs and he thought he was going to meet them. But because he didn't come out clearly, I didn't want to sin and take what belongs to God to myself. I hope ministers are learning this. Treasurers, accountants in the different churches. This is a word conference. I hope you are hearing this. When you eat of the covenant, of the sacrifice that does not belong to you, it means you owe the altar for the rest of your life. It means for generations, your generation will keep on paying that which you stole from the altar. That is why Hophni, the sons of Eli, died. If they were fornicating outside, far away, they wouldn't die so quickly. Mercy will follow them. But all the holy things that were coming to serve God, they slept with them. Ah! The women you should be protecting from fornicators. You have become the one fornicating with them. Defiling your own covenant. You are feeding your covenant with fornication. Ah! And they told the father. The father was helpless. 
The father did a very stupid thing. He said, let God's will be done. Ah, then he didn't deserve to be a God. Instead of breaking down, begging for them in before the God of heaven, and calling them and retiring them from church service. If I were the one, I would sack you from church, anything church, so that you don't kill yourself and kill me at the end. Eli didn't do that. You know, there are some weak fathers like that. I don't know which wife he had. She was never mentioned. But the wife will have stood in the grab. Like the wife of Moses did. To save the life of the foolish man. And will have disciplined those children. Ah, if you are committing these sins today against the covenant, you must repent and let them go. Because it is all part of what? The covenant. Are you still being blessed tonight? That's why I'm happy that he gave us this chance. So that we learn how the covenant works. Because the covenant is sensitive. The covenant is alive. So don't be deceived. If you see me ride in the escalator ride in, you know be me by arm. It's the gift from the altar. By other men that were commanded. They say, sir, you are riding this for us. You are no longer the small kure. You are no longer the lecturer that used to walk on the streets. That used to ride motorcycle. God commanded. So that person called this year. And God said, listen to him because I am trying to tell you what is going to happen this year. And he gave me that money. Big money. I'm used to announcing it, but I won't announce it now. In dollars, not naira. Big, 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 big. That will buy me a big Abuja house. And he said, buy a statue where you need it. A place, something, a place of rest. He was almost very specific that it is a house. Somewhere overseas, not here, so that you can go and rest. He said, if you will not do, let me hold my money. It was meant somewhere else, not you. I said, how can you take this big money and you are giving it to an individual? You should go to the altar. It will build us a lot of churches. If I it will finish, that money alone will have finished all my church needs in terms of church buildings in our mission fields. We still have 20 churches we need to build in the mission fields. The people are sitting under the tree. And there is no money. And this man is giving me money to go and build one house for myself. And I have a house in Nigeria. Will I be sleeping in two houses per day? He said it is a dossier, the Lord. If you won't do it, allow me to keep the money. <laughs> I looked at him. I said, well, obedience is better than sacrifice. So I collected. If I, he didn't give up, I don't even know how the money went. He paid it into my account and commanded somebody to go and remove the money in, London, in, in the U.S., Bank of America, and buy me a house in Orlando. It went through my account, yes. But I have a second person who signs my account with me. He commanded that person. And the last time a month ago, when I went to the U.S., I was presented with a house in Orlando. I didn't pray for it. I didn't ask for it. I didn't look forward to it. It's not one of my faith list. You make a list. I want a house in America. You will never catch me writing those kind of stuff. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I say, me, small bushman in Kavacha, get house for America. When Portacot people don't get house for America. <laughs> With all their younger. Somebody say, it is the covenant. Is the covenant. Somebody say, it is the covenant. You don't need to covet that which is not your own. If it is in your destiny and it is part of your need, the covenant will supply it. Somebody say, oh God, remember me. Somebody say, oh God, remember me. The sacrifice. That on, under that word sacrifice is service. 
under that word sacrifice is given. It is under that word sacrifice that all the kinds of givings are. Giving. You give. You don't do it as a business thing. It's a worship thing. Then under that sacrifice is worship and praise. This your body is the one doing all of you worship him with everything because he has nothing to do with your material, your car. His business is with you personally. I repeat, he has no business without your car. His business is with you. It's you that will go to heaven. Your car will stay here. He has no business with you. It is you he gave eternal life, not your car. Let me quickly conclude because I see my time is coming to an end. And since you honored me by making me come earlier, I better keep covenant too. <laughs> now, let me show you a secret because I was going to go into the part where we conclude. But there is one important secret I must, I cannot teach you all. God will raise people who will teach you. Amen. But God made me to take it like this. So people, some people can listen to this tape and know the ABCD of this covenant, how to walk in it. So holiness is in it, giving in, is in, 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 in it, worship and praise is in, in it, service is in it. The last thing Jesus did was to wash their feet and say, do likewise. So it's not humility when you serve somebody. It's not the issue of humility. It is your body giving an acceptable sacrifice to the Lord. It's an act of worship to the one with whom it expands you. It doesn't cost you anything to be humble. Did you hear what I said? It doesn't cost you anything to be humble. But there is one thing which we are going to start praying with. And then we will call the angels to enforce this by force. Second Samuel 23, I think it's verses 5 to 7. Second Samuel 23, 5 to 7. Please, when you have time, read that John 14, 22 to 25. 22, 23, 24, sorry, to 24. It says, if you keep my commandment, I and the Father will come we will not only love you, but we will stay inside of you. We will, and we will not just stay inside of you. Please, can you put it quickly? We'll come back to Matthew, Samuel 23. Let me just read it. So we see these terms. 20, I mean, John 14, 22 to 24. Put John. We are coming back to this, so you can always take it back. Uh -huh. No, John, yes, John 14, 22. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is this? 23, yes. Judas, I mean, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we together, me and my father, we will come unto him and make our abode with him. That is why your body is very important. It's the central point. We will live inside, inside his body, his temple. Uh-huh. Verse 24 now. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. Now he has simplified it, so he don't just say words. But his sayings. His sayings. Some of you are marrying third wives now. Is that part of his sayings? If it is, continue to marry. I wish you were. If it is not, you have already demolished the altar. You need to restore it back by restituting not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. Those are the times of command. You will know there is an if, if a man loves me. It, look, there is no two way about it. If you don't keep his sayings, you don't love him. You are not part of that covenant. Huh? If, if it makes you feel guilty a little, that is good. It means you should do something about it. So you can repair your path. You can't, because of a morsel of bread, miss your destiny on earth and miss eternal life. Morsel of bread. You were meant to be a head of state. Now you are just a managing director and you have retired yourself because of disobedience. 
You never seen the head of state stool for which you were ordained. That was where the covenant was taking you to. You retired yourself by serving the altar and the covenant with strange food. That is not part of his sayings. Can you use that as a mirror to correct yourself? If I stop here, I have done a good job for the master. I have spoken like an oracle. But I'm not stopping here. In 2 Samuel chapter 23 verse 5, now put it. Let's finish it there. Where are thou, sir? Put it there so that we can start claiming things and doing things. Now, listen. It is your business to draw everything that connects to your life and your godliness into the covenant. Because the covenant, when you do it at the beginning, is only between you and God and what your body gives God. Now, if you deliberately decide to invite God into your house to own your house for you, and he, he steps there. You know, he, Omoluabi, God, now Omoluabi, now where you put him, he go stay. You know, they take the one way, no give up. If you hand over for him to control, he will control. So, do something. The secret of David is what you're about to read, the house of David, that God keeps on talking about. David, David, David. David said, Although my house be not so with God, that means they have not kept perfectly the laws of God. I mean, they have committed their sins, killed people, his children were rebellious. He said, Yet, shall we read the rest together, everybody? Yet, he had made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and sure, for this is all my salvation and all my desire, although he make it not to grow. Why? Because of the things we mentioned, the reason why covenant does not grow is the way you service it. Your sacrifice. So he said he made it not to grow. That means the house of David will have been greater than what it was. For me, I don't even know what is greater than giving birth to the Savior. But the house of David will have even been greater than that. He short-circuited himself because of half obediences. But that is not the issue I'm trying to make here. The issue is that the secret of your invisibility is that take everything in your house and command, co co covenant them to the Lord. I'm not saying hand them over to the church, no. Hand it back to him for custody. That means draw a list of everything that you have in your house. You have a house, of course it is furnished. That's okay, I'm not saying go and take the fridge and the stove and start writing by covenant. That's not what I'm saying. The house represents everything. That's why it's called house. Take your house, for example, and then take your cars. You have five cars, six cars. Take them together. Covenant them to the Lord. Every year, make a sacrifice for everything you have. For everything you have. That means make a covenant with them and say, Lord, I want you to enter into covenant not just with me, but enter into covenant on my behalf for my house, the properties you have given me, the vehicles you have given me, so that they don't kill me on the road. So that the same covenant that protects my life will protect my cars. It will protect my house. If Job had that covenant, Satan couldn't have broken his house the way he did and killed all his children. He didn't have it. David had it. So it was difficult. It, the only time David got into crisis was by his own hand, his own iniquity. His children got into crisis by their own iniquity, not because an enemy defeated them. Go and search your scripture. It was their iniquities that punished them because the covenant, God was betrothed to them in faithfulness. He defended them in faithfulness. He never denies himself and his righteousness. Now, covenant that. Take all your children, if they are five, do what Job said. Covenant them. You say, Lord, from the firstborn, I bless the firstborn. He shall be this. Covenant all of them to the Lord and service that altar either quarterly. Choose a pattern that God recognizes with you. Either quarterly or yearly at the beginning of the year like Israel does. Israel renews the covenant for every member of their family every year. They will gather. If the children were in America, they will come back to Jerusalem. They will join their father. They will eat. They will break that bread together. They will renew covenant with Yahweh together. Then the children can go back to America. Now, 
That is how the altar is service. We are talking about covenant. Ensuring that this covenant, this divine covenant is kept. Take your job, for example. Make a sacrifice. Take a covenant, an offering, a gift on behalf of your job. And say, Baba, thank you for the gift of this job. Did you not notice that for everything that happened in Abraham's life, any new thing he did, he built an altar on his behalf. He built an altar of thanksgiving. That was the same thing that David was doing. It means after this world conference, you will go and draw a list of everything if in a motorcycle you get. For your children, if you like, this is what I do. I'm telling you what I am a priest. I don't have the kind of money that a lot of you have. If I was thinking about that this morning. <laughs> I said, these people don't know that I fly the air of the Holy Spirit. With all that big house in America that they just gave me last week, I don't have the money to service that house. But the man who gave it will take care of it. And when the man, I refer to God. Are you following me? Those things don't bother me. He will take care of them. If he's taking care of the ones he has given me now, he will take care of everything. He is well capable. But listen to me. With that which I don't have, I have five children. Every year, I take a seed, an envelope for each child. You remember, Job made a sacrifice for each child. They will go to the child's house, they will make a sacrifice. They will go to the child's house, another child, they will make a sacrifice. They will make a sacrifice. The sacrifice was to keep them alive in the covenant. It's different from his own covenant. God said, for I know Job already. The same way God said, I know Abraham. God told Satan, have you seen Job, my servant? That means Job's personal covenant was sustaining him, but the children didn't have their personal covenant. So Job was doing one on their behalf for mercy. There are fathers here in Port Harcourt who call me when their children are in trouble overseas, and they make their covenant. I think some of them even go to Redeem Church. They make their covenant overseas for their children, and there is no problem their children have gone through that they have not escaped. None. Jobo, when the father begins to cry from here, they begin to get job by force in America. That tells you the father has a living altar. Picking no, they weren't born. They will call and say, sir, they are giving birth. I have, we have fasted. I say, what have you done about that? We have done this, but the doctor said there is a problem. I say, your covenant will carry them through. If you did not create a covenant, the covenant will speak for them. So I take an envelope. It will carry my daughter's name, Glory Kure, the first daughter. She's in her later 20s. I will put her name there. I will carry uh, El Shaddai Kure. He's in his later 20s. I will also put his name there on the envelope. And I will put a seed the Holy Ghost has commanded me from my heart for each one of them at the beginning of the year. I will take Maranatha Kure, put his name. All these are graduates. Some of them are master degree holders. Fine. But they are still my children. If something touches them, it touches me. They are still part of my covenant. I serve, they are all born again. They service, they take their offerings for themselves. Now, that does not bother me. They are still my seed. My seed must be kept. So you see, by the time they take their covenant, and I'm taking one, they have a double covenant covering them. That is what will make them greater than me. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. How many of you are understanding how this thing works? I want to set the statues for you straight. Because even if I don't do miracles you remember, you remember me for. And remain in that area. Ah, that the Kure came in. I don't want that one. If you take this gift, it will do all the miracles for you. If you understand these teachings, it changes your life. Now, that is what 2 Samuel 23 was talking about. He covenanted all his children. He covenanted for his army, the office, the palace. He covenanted that. He said everything was covenanted. Ordered, the covenant was ordered in all things. Everybody say, ordered in all things. That means he separated each one and made a sacrifice for them. Made a call and said, God, just like we read in Hosea chapter 2, 18. I ask that you enter into covenant with the heavens and the earth on behalf of my children. First of all, on behalf of glory. I make a covenant with the God of heaven to protect glory, to make her eat by your hand. 
When she rises, let the, the same thing you do for me, do for them. I take, and then she will bring an emblem and say, God, here is a gift to seal this covenant for glory. Here is another gift to seal the covenant. Each sacrifice carries a name that the Holy Ghost becomes responsible for. I'm telling you how it works. You take one for your business. You have 10 businesses and all of them are active. Don't take one for all the, take one for each one of the 10 because all of them are productive. They are alive, they are active. They are bringing fruits. So you take one for each business. You have an oil business. You have a gas business. Take one for the gas business. You have one for selling motor cars. You know, you take one for that. You have a general purpose one. You take one for as many registered companies you have that are active. You must take a seed of covenant. Are you understanding how this covenant works? I'm telling you about servicing the covenant. And I'm telling you how it works. How you enjoy it. Immediately you do that, it's like saying Coban. Like the Pharisees used to do, they would put oil on it and say it belongs to the Lord. So they don't want to share it with anybody. Nobody can touch it. Immediately you do that, God tells the heavenlies, that property belongs to me by covenant. And because it belongs to the angels, take care of it. All the laws by which you are protected are transferred also to protect your businesses. They fly in the air, because of you that plane won't crash. We were going on a journey with Tunde Bakari recently. I know he said that jokingly, but he said that by revelation. We understand ourselves. And he said, immediately he saw me. We were boarding, we were on the same class in the plane. And he said, Kure, the man from Kafanchan. So you are on this flight. Ah, then I can just change my clothes. And put my pajamas on the plane and sleep off because the angels can never abandon you even if they abandon me <laughs> and i laughed he said now we all in the flight are guaranteed that we will arrive london safely no incident now, that's not the first time i'm hearing that i've had that so many times ah sir you're on this flight <laughs> it is well with us Satan can try another time, but not today. <laughs> Today's own, I have escaped. <laughs> but what makes us escape is the covenant. That is when you can now say, underneath are the everlasting arms. I didn't hear somebody say amen to that. <laughs> it's the covenant. It's the covenant. They are ordered in all things. Look, I cry sometimes when I, I don't know how I've survived the Muslims and remained alive up to today. I don't know what tomorrow holds except that God is tomorrow. But let me tell you something. I never thought I would see 50. How much more be walking towards 60? I never thought of that. I never thought of that. I made myself a sacrifice from the beginning. Like the first time they came to kill me in Kano, I said, you are too late. The lion of the tribe of Judah killed me and swallowed me and put me inside the stomach a long time ago. I am already dead. What you see is not me. It is him walking in my flesh. The Muslim became confused and pushed me off the wall because he had guns shooting. And he ran away thinking I was falling off the wall because he pushed me with my legs and something pushed me back. I'm telling you what happened. I don't know how these things happen. It's like there was a spring behind and the force pushed me back. Up to tomorrow, there are many things I cannot explain in my life. In Bayro University, that was what led that the Ade Boye, years later, to come and say, my son, can you allow me to put a hedge around you? We will watch over you. You are not alone. That is why up to tomorrow, that the Adeboe can never make mistakes in my eye. If you understand what I mean. He was the first who believed in me. We were in the north. Nobody cared about us in the north. He was the first who extended the hand of fellowship. It was after him that Idahosa came up and said, send for that boy. But it was daddy. 
And that is why the only one who qualified to pour oil of ordination for my, on my head is daddy. And he was the one who ordained me. <laughs> covenant! And I've kept that covenant with him up to tomorrow. And I service it. Covenant. Covenant. That God pushed me off. And I stood. Ah, even when your enemies have advantage over you, they will not win the battle against you. <laughs> But I made this covenant ordered in all things. I don't know all this your dogon terrench in this big English you speak. I know the simple one he taught me. So my cars, every one of them have a covenant tag on them. By prayer. Every year me and my children will line up. We will go after each property, anoint them with oil. I will anoint my four tires and build an altar around them. I say, Lord, this year they are covered. And anoint all the cars one by one, anoint my house, anoint the gates, then tell all my children, no matter how old they are, oh yeah, kneel down. I anoint each one with oil. Every year is a tradition of my house, the Kure family. You do, I don't care where you are. If you like be schooling in the heavens, you will come down from heaven that day for anointing service. Why don't you start a personal anointing service in your house? Every year, such your own pattern. Is it every quarter, every year? It is a pattern of altar that you build that services your existence. How many of you are blessed tonight? That's the final word here today. Service everything like that. And take that altar to the place where God has blessed you, where you have, take the giving. Don't distribute it to all pastors. Your name is not all pastors. You are not a scattered life. Carry the whole altar. If it is a covenant that is servicing your altar and your covenant. Sacrifice like that are put in one place. The Bible says there is a place where I have commanded my name to sit. To stay. Where you have been blessed. Where there is purity. There you will take it. And there you will drop it. And I have never seen people who kept those patterns. That did not survive the times. I can't give you testimonies. I have a lot of them. Can you rise up on your feet? Put Micah chapter 5 verse 1 on the screen. Micah chapter 5 verse 1 on the screen. Rise up on your feet. Chapter 5 verse 1. Micah chapter 5 verse 1. Micah chapter 5. <laughs> now, in conclusion, now, now that you know who you are by revelation, now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. Everyone who fears the Lord should begin to walk together. You become a troop. When you hold hands and agree, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. I taught this in a women's conference a week ago, some two weeks ago. It was heavy. But I'm not going into their own teachings. Gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He had laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. Now, if you read on, that's how the Savior was born. This gathering, the daughter of troops commanding her troops gave birth to Jesus Christ. The yoke of the Assyrians was broken because of these daughters of troops. Now, the question I want to ask you, what do they mean by old daughter of troops? It means the woman has troops around her. Who are those troops? Creation. Gather thyself together in troops. Old daughter. That means each woman. Ma'am, can you come here please, if you don't mind. This is my big sister standing here. Listen to me because this is very important. Do you know when she walked from here, an army walked with her here? An army you cannot see. That is what it means by daughter of troops. When you rise, all of creation rises and walks with you. Look, the covenant carries them. The covenant draws them. There is a drawing of heavenly forces because you are exercising this covenant. That is the end result. When you rise, the forces of heaven rise and come with you. They go everywhere you enter with you. 
That is why they knew there was a war in Deborah's time. And that's why Mazar Arcturus, that day Arcturus, for when you had the stars fought, they were actually referring to Arcturus, the one who services the Messiah and Messianic covenants. You heard about Arcturus yesterday. Uh -huh. So don't look at me as if I'm talking a strange thing. Arcturus came down to follow her. As she was walking, she was collecting all the spirits that walk for God on the streets. If she enters this street, all the spirits that walk for God there will come after her. To glorify, to glorify the covenant, to defend it, to keep her from every devourer. If you cross her path, you are dead. Today, this is your story. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, daughter of troops. Zechariah chapter 1. If you start reading from verse 11, the Bible talks about the man with the red horse. Today, I release him to speak for you. The Bible says, if you read that 11 and you go on, the Bible says there that those red horses were meant to service the covenant. And that they went to and fro, and there were no covenants calling them. Because the sons of God were not doing covenant. Many of us have not been living a lifestyle of covenant. Whether by your body, whether by your services, whether by your giving, whether by your worship or praise. So the angels cannot walk, because it's the covenant that draws them. It is the quality of your covenant that makes them, keeps them in place for you. And because you don't have one, you can only rely on the mercy of the pastor and his prayer. So every time when God sees him and his covenant, he honors and hides you, but he does not honor and hide you for your sake. God ought to be honoring you for your sake. Not because Kure prayed for you. Not because that the Adeboe prayed for you. But because he knows you and has your record in heaven. For a season, I can cover her by my own favor. But eternally, only one can cover her. Not the God of heaven. The altar she has with the God of heaven. Eternally. For a season. I have had people who have worked with me and said Satan couldn't touch them. The day they left our ministry, went somewhere else, within three months, some of them were dead. Within three months, they had lost all their properties because the other pastors were only interested in their property, not their soul. And they thought I was too hard. I am actually a hard master. Don't tell me to mentor you, you'll be in trouble. Ask the businessmen I mentor. I am this Old Testament schoolmasters in my own way. You must dress properly. You must follow the order of heaven. They were ordered in all things. So not everybody can be my friend. And I don't seek everybody as friend. My name is not everybody. So it is only for a season that the pastor's anointing can keep you. The day you leave it, the covering, uh, if you didn't have a original altar, he won't survive it. Did you hear what I said? Congregations hide under the anointing of the sanctified altar. But the day they break away from that altar, they are in trouble because they don't have their own altar. Look, if you break away from that altar and you are doing the wrong thing, because you have your own altar, your altar will lead you back to where your covering is. It will never allow you to stray. How many of you understand what I'm saying today? So as you build under the pattern of the Lord, when you rise like this, troops follow you. An army follows you. The army fights. Zechariah chapter 1 says, they went to and fro under the middle tree. They found nobody, that the world was quiet. Nobody was doing what they should be doing right. So they came back and tell the Lord, Lord, there is nothing to fight on the earth. And they, were, they came ready to kill anything that stood against the covenant. And the covenant was not effective. The covenant was not active. So they went home, back home to rest. You have wasted the ministry of the Holy Spirit because you have not kept your charge. Today, everything that has made you naked, we release the fire of God to destroy that thing. In the name of Jesus. 
it is when you keep that covenant that Jesus himself will service you. The prince of the kings of the earth. Oh, it is when you keep this covenant that Daniel 12, 1 will happen. Michael will defend his people. In the last days, all these angels will start coming out to defend. It is when you keep this covenant that the earth, don't you remember that when Israel went to war, the trees came out and killed their enemies? Hailstones came out. Oh, I was telling you at the beginning that there are people who have died because of me. I mean, not that they gave their lives for me. They came against me. They didn't live long. There are people who have lost, even in government, who have lost their jobs because they dared cross the covenant and smite it. And God said, you smote me. You think it's good that you smote? And I didn't say God punished them. I just dodged the blows like that and side by side. By the time I turned back, they were on the ground. I didn't touch them. They have lost their job. People have been smitten mad. Sometimes I have to plead for them. There was a woman who went blind because she was one peddling the rumor that we were blood suckers in the north. Everybody who is Pentecostal is a blood sucker in those days. Your pastor came from there, especially in my area. We were the ones who first started the moves. And they were seeing miracles. I said, ah, these guys are witches. They are worse than the witches, the traditional witches. They are only scientific. I suffered. Even as a lecturer, big man with three picking, three children grown up, they beat me like a child. They will corner you in your evangelism, catch you, lay you flat, beat the hell out of you. They beat me like a child. So when you see me riding in those big cars, I get bulala for back. <laughs> I have been humiliated. I am still humiliated in a few times. In a few cases, up to now. Listen. But everyone who flogged one rope, God gave them five. <laughs> Why? It's the covenant you are flogging. It's the covenant you are flogging. Somebody said, Kure, we told you to cooperate. You are not cooperating. The Muslims had paid him. They were on, he was on their payroll, a police officer. He was in charge of the whole area. Kure, you must stop this. And he was threatening Thank God now they are my friends. In those days, those who had more money made them to punish me. He said, from today, ah, he made a mistake. From today, even when you don't break a traffic law, we will arrest you. When you are supposed to turn to the right, if you turn to the left, even if you are right, we will arrest you. My boys will be on you. The man started raining and raining and raining. And then the man said something. Kure, between now and December, I will lock you up. You know, some of those top bosses talk like gods. I will lock you up. Then suddenly something stirred in my spirit. Before when he was talking, I had put my head on the ground, listening. Then suddenly I read, when he said, I will lock you up. And threatened. I raised my head and I looked at him. I said, sir, don't say the spirit of the Lord. According to the words of your mouth shall you be judged. If by December you are still sitting on this job, there is no God in heaven. I was specific. I said by December 31st, if you are still sitting, do you know he was sacked December 31st by midnight? 31st. By Alaji Kumasi. Kumasi was there. I don't know that he was in charge of the records or whatever, but he went into the record session. He was looking at old files. He was sad. I'm talking about what happened while I was a lecturer. That was in the late 80s. Now, let me tell you. Kumasi took an iniquity he committed in 1962. He wasn't sad for a recent sin. He had been an excellent officer. I say in 1962, five of them had committed something. The others, you know, there was a boardroom or whatever, whatever, guard room, uh, whatever they do, you know, court martial. All the others were sacked. He was one who escaped because he had a godfather. And he had risen in ranks. He's a big ogre now. He was the area of that part of And then suddenly, 
Kumasi goes there on his God will guide the feet of your enemies to retire your other enemies. He, he got sad. On the 1st of January, I was eating in my house. He went and brought Chris Abashia. Those of you who know the north and those of you who live in the north in the older days. Chris Abashia was then a registrar or something in Unijos. He went and brought Chris Abashia to my house. I, I saw Chris he's, he's, He was a well-respected man, among, a man amongst us. He was our big brother. I saw Abashia driving in his car and the police oga, January 1st, was inside the car. They brought, and the ogre was so humble that day, he was not police again. <laughs> he said, well done, sir. He said, something, sir. I didn't understand it. I said, sit down. He said, no, sir. So Abashia said, look, I will go straight to the point. Kure, you know, me and you have fought this fight in the north. I said, yes, sir. He said, I've come to beg you. I want you to write a letter of appeal to Babangida on behalf of this man. And I said, what is the problem? He said, he got a signal by 10 minutes to 12 last night. Last night was 31st, we were in the new year. A signal, the letter didn't even come, now by signal he was sad. That if you hand over to the next officer, he should not report to work the next day. I said, by who? He said, Kumasi. So they now started bringing that uh, it is because he favored Christians. That was when I frowned. Favored Christians. When I'm the first witness. <laughs> Some of the blood of our Christians that were killed in that part are in the hands of that man. He would refuse to mobilize his policemen to the scene. He would delay for them to finish and go because he was paid to delay. Then he will go and write a very wrong story. We will come with the correct people. He will order us. That is why he threatened me. He will order all the people we said to go and complain to be arrested and be put as part of the complicity of the matter. That the state managed the thing. He will write and he will say he has cool priests in the prison. The people who went to report now are the ones who are the cool priests. Ah! And meanwhile, souls were killed in the crisis. People died. We buried them. People crying. This policeman had blood. So I told Chris Abashia, mene mene take care of our sin. <laughs> I said, what God has done, the Bible says it is forever. No man added unto it. And I said, Abashia, uh, uncle, the Bible says no man, I am man. It will take spirit to add or subtract if the spirit is bold enough. But for me as man, the Bible says no man. I won't add or subtract. I'm not going to write this letter. Because that day, that time I was one of the main voices that stood against Babangida for our people. And Babangida sometimes listened. We would write the appeal. I, I was a lecturer. I was bold enough. The lecturers defended the Southern Kaduna people those days. And I was at the forefront. Before I went into full time. Today, May the Lord remember the wickedness yeah. of any man that has made a covenant with Satan yeah. against your soul. Yeah. Right now, let that spell be broken. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Can you begin to thank God for the covenant? Just bless God for the covenant tonight. Just give him glory. Just give him praise. Just give him praise. I say yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. I say yes, 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 Lord. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, 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 Lord. Say yes, Lord. I say yes. Yeah. 
Yes, yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, 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 Lord. I say, I say yes, Lord. I say, I say yes, Lord. I say yes. Invading my house tonight. Enter into my house. Anything that is not in place, remove it or order it for me. But tonight, begin to clean up my house. I invite you. Reorder my life for me. Reorder my life for me. Reorder my life for me. Change the covenant. Every strange covenant. Let it be destroyed. Shake and tore the bow, 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 Yes, Lord. Hey. I say yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. I say yes. I say yes, Lord. I say oh, I say yes, Lord. I say. Somebody here tonight, you have been suffering from a childhood disease. Even in your own age, that disease is still affecting your heart. It's still affecting your chest. It's still affecting your bones. Tonight, by the blood of Jesus, the ordinance of that disease is broken. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. I say, I say yes, yes, yes. you drank but in that water was a mixture a covenant with darkness and you drank it into your body and from that day your body has never been the same you have prayed you have fasted the anchor of that spirit in your body is broken tonight By the covenant of the blood of Jesus, I release you from the condemnation of that spirit. Tonight, let your body 
that is the temple of the Lord give up that covenant vomit it out throw it out I cancel its ordinance now in the name of Jesus somebody shout amen I say yes Lord I say yes Lord I say yes Somebody had taken something that represents you and has used a needle to choke it. And from that time, even physically, there is a part of you that looks demobilized. When you rise beyond a particular level, the pain goes down your body. Today, that pain is taken away. Receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. You can check it out right now. You are free by the covenant that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is somebody out of jealousy. Some evil people, because they cannot punish you directly, they are punishing your children. They are making them pay your price. Things seem to be going wrong, we don't, they, they cannot settle. Today, if this earth listens to this covenant of us, I command the earth to open up and swallow those people. I break the siege over your house now. I break the siege over your family now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. There are some of you here. You are contending against occult masters. They work with you. They are masters in the occult world. Some of them are your colleagues you meet in the meeting places. There seems to be a boardroom struggle. There seems to be limiting your ability to move further. There is a particular business, I think it is in the communication business, that began to prosper. And then suddenly, I saw a golf dug from the ground. It opened and set boundaries and begin to draw away the strength of that communication business. So much that right now, it is in a comatose situation. Today, I destroy that dragon spirit. Yeah. It shall not prosper against your business yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. Yeah. Today, I saw God lifting that your business. I saw him planting it on a new ground where your enemies cannot touch it. I release the angels of the Lord to take prisoner now. Every spirit that was a messenger in your situation, let them be bound in chains now. Be bound in chains now. Be bound in chains now. In, chains now. in the name of Jesus. I heard the Lord say, I should tell you that some of those who were involved in that conspiracy, in that confederacy against you, he has already started pulling them down. I don't know, somebody's stomach was shut down. It was, it's like a band used to tie it. The same way women tie, you know, their stuff like that. Somebody's stomach was tied like that. I don't know 
what they shut down or what pains they are creating there. But today, that witchcraft that is connected to your roots, it is connected to your home village. Today, I release the fire of God to consume it. Let the judgment by fire smite it. I command your belly to be losing now. I proclaim liberty in your spirit. Receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. I will say it as I hear it. There is one of you here. One of the key people that is involved in troubling you by witchcraft. And physically, because he has the power physically. He doesn't need to hide under witchcraft. He torments you physically, torments you by witchcraft. I hear the Lord say, watch between now and September. An accident is going to take place. That will cripple that person for the rest of his life. He will not be able to touch you again. Somebody say, my God arise. And let your enemies be scattered. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. There is somebody else. For four years. God is specific in this matter. You had been taken away from your rightful place and done somewhere. Count the number of years. Four years. And you have been parabolating and hanging around. You are neither up nor down. Today, God has just rehabilitated you. Amen. Your seasons have changed. Between now and September, between now and the end of September, you shall be situated in a new place. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. I say receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. season of trouble as the brains of the nations of the earth are being confused all over the place and rulers are doing stupid things anyone that shall set upon your portion I release the power of God upon your life your portion shall vomit them out There is a battle for the life of this nation that is about to take place in the, within this next three months. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's going to shake things a little before the year ends. But the Lord is doing this to stabilize the altar and to make the altar prosper. Your inheritance and that of the redeemed church shall not be taken away. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. There is somebody. You don't know it. But you are about to face 
a committee that will judge you in the next one month and try to find you guilty of one thing or the other. Today I saw an angel descend from the heavens and I saw the angel begin to scatter their brains. And I heard the Lord say, as I live, as I live, say the spirit of the Lord, you shall not eat of their desolation. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. <laughs> I see appointment galore in this church tonight amongst the members and those who are attending the meeting tonight. Receive your appointment from heaven. Receive appointment for your businesses. Receive in the name of Jesus. Listen. Tonight you want to repair your altar. You know it's been messed up before. You start settling the matter since morning. But you want the altar to bear witness. Tonight, first of all, I'm just going to make one altar call. For the repairing of the altar. We're talking about the covenant. It will bring you to your place of rest. It is meant to bring you to your place of rest. It is that altar that is carrying us. I didn't teach you all. In Revelations 9, 11, I think. I can't remember very well now. Because I didn't, but Revelation 9 11 will tell you very clearly that there is a tabernacle of testimony, an altar of testimony in heaven. It represents the, it is that altar that services your earthly altar of covenant. That will have been the completion of the talk. But listen tonight, you want to repair so that your spirit can be one with heaven, your altar can flow with heaven, and you want to remove all the compromises you have brought to the altar. These are the days of restitution, like your pastor repeated today. They are the days of restitution. If there is anything you need to restitute for, you change somebody's landmark, go back and release that person. Somebody you need to say, I'm sorry, I wish I can do better. That time I would have spoken, I didn't speak. But I'm sorry, and I speak healing to you now. Let the Lord bring you restitution and rest. Miracles will follow that person because you have spoken it by the covenant. Because you are asking God to repair what you will have done for that person when you were in position to do it. And God will follow him for your sake and gather that person back. But today you want to repair that altar. You just want to restore back your altar. You have had two eyes in two different, your leg is in the world, your leg is with Christ. Now that you have understood the presence of an altar, the process, if you want to repair your altar tonight, I want you to leave that seat and come forward quickly. Even if you just step out of your seat, you don't need to stand here in front and I close the service there. It's my last night here tonight because I'm preaching in Lagos tomorrow or I am having a, another occasion in Lagos tomorrow, not preaching. But it's the last night tonight before I go to Lagos to continue my next assignment. If you are coming out to dedicate that life, I want you to step forward and come out quickly now. To repair your altar and say, God, repair them. Uh -huh. I see. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, 
tonight have stopped going to church. You are not regular. The Spirit of God says you must go back and renew your covenant in church. And the reason is this. is one of the command of the covenant. That you shall not forsake the assembling of one another. If you don't like a church, that is why you have stopped. Ask God to command you where to go, but you must belong to a congregation. Did you hear what I said? It's a command of the covenant. So in the day of temptation, you are not overtaking alone. God will bear witness from heaven and defend you. Because we are having a new generation of Christians who don't go to church at all. If you came here tonight, because you heard I was the one preaching, God brought you so that I can tell you, go back because the days ahead are evil. And you will be protected. Can somebody say amen to that? Those of you who are standing, can you ask the Lord to begin to overhaul everything that is incomplete in your life? Father, overhaul and replace with yourself. All I want is you, you, you tonight. Just throw out everything that needs to be thrown out. The Bible says one more time, I shake the heavens and the earth. According to the book of Hebrews, the Bible says so that those things that cannot be shaken will remain. And they will repair your life. Can you tell the Lord to begin to shake out every imperfection in your life? Father, uproot their roots. Remove them from me. I repent for even allowing them. I repent for allowing them. Just take them out and replace them with your covenant. I want you to come in today. Write a new law by which my life exists. And by that law, let me be ruled. the blood of Jesus to bring you redemption. Tell the Father, Father, I ask that the blood of Jesus bring me redemption now. The sacrifice of your only son set me free right now from the condemnations of my own life. From the condemnations that has come from other people. From the circumstances that have tied me down here. My Father, in the name of Jesus, Overhaul my spirit today and let the spirit of grace come inside of me. Overhaul my spirit today. Overhaul my temple. Write your law in my heart. You said a new spirit will you give me. Give me a new spirit. You said a new heart you will give me. Give me a new heart. Take away the old. Let the ordinances of the old be broken. From today, the law of the old shall not rule over my life. But the law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus alone do I permit. Even the law of grace. Can you tell the Lord, build a new altar for me? I plead with you. Build a new covenant. Let us start afresh on this holy ground. I report before this altar that you, may, you might tear down every form of idolatry that condemns my life. Every form of covenant. Today, let them fall. Let them be destroyed. Every atmosphere of idols manipulating my life. Arrows. I renounce them. By the covenant you are building now. Oh God. Let them be overthrown. Overthrow them. Overthrow them. Overthrow my iniquities. I permit you today. Overthrow every lying spirit. Every insincerity. Every spirit of adultery and fornication. So 
somebody shout overthrow every form of darkness in my life tonight overthrow them all build a new altar build a new spirit in my spirit today I lay my body on your altar as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto the most high and I call for the blood of Jesus to seal this altar to seal my spirit to seal my soul in the name of Jesus can somebody shout amen therefore wherever you are standing tonight every pit that has been dug for you let it be shut down now every evil that is following you anywhere I hear the Lord say in these seven days a sweeping spirit is going to go across the land strange covenants that were tied to your life will be physically cut off their spell will no longer work in your life as a sign I hear the Lord say within the next three weeks there are some of you here who are unemployed God will get you a job to do it shall be a sign by the hand of the Lord that means you shall step into the waters after now. And God will bless you. Can you say Heavenly Father? Renew my mind by your word. In the name of Jesus. Everybody in this congregation. Can you begin to ask God to enter into covenant on your behalf. For your house. For your car for your wife, for your children. Begin to call them by names. List the things. Father, in this sanctuary, I enter into covenant with you to enter into covenant for my house, on behalf of my house. My wife, call her name. My children, call their names. Adopt them in this covenant and defend them for my sake and protect them for my sake. And multiply them for my sake. Let the laws of the covenant rule over them. My father begin to cast your covering, your canopy. Over all that is in mine. Today I renounce every strange covenant in my house. Anything that is a strange covenant in my business. Whether it is coming from my workers or not. Because the business is named by my name. Today overthrow the strange thrones. My workers shall not steal my business. Overthrow their strange thrones. Expose their strange thrones. Begin to pray for your family, your husband. Tell the Lord. Let the covenant overtake him. Let the covenant capture him. If the husband is not born again, break the yoke of darkness. And tell God before this year is over. Let the covenant overtake that person. Tell God you are, you are permitting him now to overthrow every altar of darkness that has already connected with any of your properties. Let them be overthrown tonight. In the name of Jesus, somebody say, my God, overthrow tonight every strange altar that is walking or walking in my house, in any of my properties. Tonight, oh God, let their kingdom come to an end. Arrest their spirits. Arrest their spirits. Arrest the human beings they are using. Tonight by the covenant I make Let my businesses begin to vomit them out Let them begin to run away Even without resigning Let them not come back to the offices This year Set your terror against them That between now and the end of this year 
all those that trouble my inheritance in the name of Jesus let them be cut off you said you make a divine as mad tonight I pronounce madness over every definition that has been done against me and the diviners let their counsel be turned around let it be cancelled tonight by the blood of my covenant the blood of Jesus I overthrow them in my house I overthrow them with my children with the businesses with my job in the name of Jesus can somebody shout overthrow in the name of Jesus somebody shout amen, amen. can you say by the blood of Jesus I step into my house tonight every ground that was not reclaimed I reclaim them tonight I go in the power of this covenant all that is mine shall come to me this year this year all that is mine shall come to me in the name of Jesus and I promise to come to the altar to give you praise to give you praise to give you praise in the name of Jesus can somebody say amen Can you lift up your sons and just begin to bless him? Just say thank you. Just say thank you. For those of you he has healed tonight, tell him thank you. Just tell him thank you. I hear the Lord say tonight, he had carried out an incision in somebody's flesh. Now, when the Lord says he has carried out an incision, it means he has carried out a surgery. I don't know what was the surgery, but the Lord will not allow another knife touch you. Yeah. By his own knife, he has cut off that situation in your body. Receive your miracle where you are standing now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And you must come back here and testify. Somebody shout hallelujah! hallelujah! I want you to check your body. How many of you know physically now that you have received your miracle? You can't feel it, the thing anymore while you are sitting here, God has healed you of something today. Can you raise your hand if God just touched your physical body tonight and healed you of something physical? My father lifted them from the crowd and by your spirit let turn them into a, a divine miracle. Yeah. Everywhere they enter. Yeah. This healing is not only permanent, oh God. But it is transferable. Yeah. Whoever they lay hands shall be healed as they have been healed. Yeah. Receive the gift of the miracle of healing. Yeah. Freely you have received. Yeah. Freely give also. Yeah. I command that word to prosper in your life. Yeah. You will freely give healing to other people. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear somebody say amen. You must take time to testify. You must take time to testify. It's part of the worship. It's part of the agreement. Find a church, belong to a church. Go back to church. If 
You didn't like a redeemed branch. That is why you stopped going back to church. Find another redeemed branch. All the redeemed branches cannot be the same. If what you want is a holiness place, there is a redeemed branch that preaches only holiness. You will find it in the city. Find that one and stay there. But you must not forsake the gathering of the brethren. You must obey that part. So I don't fall into a trap in these last days. Did you hear that? Don't quarrel your husband over church. If he has stopped going to church for a long time and suddenly he's going to church, don't mock him and quarrel and say, I'm not going with you there. Especially if he's going to another branch of your same church. Because you are the wife, to encourage his spirit, follow him. He might follow you back to your former church. Obey first. Encourage his spirit to receive his liberty. Be wise. Husbands, the same thing for your wife. Pray for them. Be patient with them. And help, let the stronger help the weaker come back to the faith. Can somebody say amen to that? Because today God is regarding his army. There is a new army that is being born. And that is the army that will answer the enemy at the gates. Can I tell you something? Between now and December, God is going to bless you seven and tenfold. And that blessing shall become a defense for you next year. That is the essence of that prophecy. I'm not just saying it because I, I, I have concluded. I am saying it because God is building defense walls. I saw the church defended next year. Today, you stand defended. Amen. Father, I thank you for tonight. And I give you glory for all that you have done. That which you have done, let it be forever. I bless the work of Jesus' house. And I say the nations will celebrate this house. Today, I ask of you. That the laborers that labor in prosperity let them prosper Amen. in good health let them prosper Amen. in the distribution of the world let them prosper Amen. father i cover them in the blood of jesus none of them shall be lost Amen. the trouble that satan wants to look for he will find them in the name of jesus christ can you begin to thank the Holy Spirit for everything tonight? You may go back to your seats. Can you take a song? Let's rejoice together. And let's just bless the Lord. Just a minute. Listen. When you go back tonight, you must bring God a fat sacrifice. Take an offering as a first fruit to begin to seal the covenant for your families and it will be a fat seal but in the, within the next three weeks go and make covenant for everything the instruction I wanted to give is everything you make a covenant for anoint it before you bring the seal anoint it and anoint the seal and if you can if you have enough faith and my pastor here will permit me I don't know the redeemed tradition but I know of your fellowship with God. If the redeem allows you by yourself in your house, what you do in your house, nobody knows outside. And I'm not encouraged to break any redeem law. But if the redeem allows you in your house by yourself, and you are born again, and you have faith in God, break bread for yourself as a personal covenant with God. Break bread and serve yourself in Holy Communion. And you don't need to share it outside. Because why? You are building an altar with he that's yet in the secret place. This fellowship is about the secret place in the first place. Half of the things that he does in his house, you don't know. It is by his faith that God is helping him. Take a covenant to the Lord. The day you, before you bring that seed, because it's an eternal covenant, break bread for yourself on behalf of your family and the seeds you are making covenant for. Anoint the envelopes, not the pastor anointing them, but anoint them first. Put them together and say, God, this is my covenant with you. And then bring them to church and drop them. Whether anybody blesses you or not, if you find them to bless you, that's fine. If you don't find them to bless you, that's fine. 
And then can I give you a counsel? If you have 10 houses, 20 houses, and you have never been given God a title of one, start tightening the houses. Take one and dash God. It's a more difficult, you know, and that is why they say it's difficult for the rich people to enter into heaven. Uh, but it's part of the temptation you must face if you are a Christian. If you have 20 properties and the church has not received one, take one, dash the Lord. Give him as an altar. If they ask you to go and sell it like Ananias and Safina were commanded, sell it and bring back the money to them. You'll be surprised that you might sell it bigger than what you would have sold it naturally. And that's where the temptation will come. But still bring it back to the feet of the Lord. You have seven cars, eight cars, one must go for a tight. Ten cars, take one to the Lord. Don't take the worst. The elders are laughing, they know what I'm talking about. Don't take the worst, I beg you. So the pastor, the car does not, is not breaking down at every corner. Somebody gave me that kind of a car many years ago. He took the one he had not repaired for eight years. How do you expect that car to work for me? So I sent it back to sender. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But what I'm saying is that because I taught you about covenant, it's proper. I don't rush the mic and rush out and make you handle it anyhow. You must break bread with the master and say, Father, I eat this bread unto me. I submit my soul unto you and my family. Anoint each thing you are bringing as sacrifice and anoint your house afresh. When you are anointing your house, anoint the four corners. It's a symbol of the altar. Say, Lord, take this house for me. You don't need to do too much righteous prayer. You don't need to know how to pray to do this. Anoint your cars like that. Anoint your businesses. Are the instructions very clear? If you cannot do it by yourself alone because it's overwhelming, eh, that is why the pastor is there. Come and beg him and say, Daddy, can you make time for me? You are our father. Come and help me anoint these things. And he will come pray for you, pray for your family, hold a covenant prayer, or he will send somebody to do it, and it is sealed. Ah, I release you to him that is able to keep you. From today, you, are, you shall be a sign. Yes. You shall be a wonder. Yes. The world will behold this glory in your life. Yes. From today, I declare the siege around you over. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? Thank you for the privilege and God bless you. Hallelujah. Just stretch forth your hands towards Apotso and let's use him as a point of contact to all of our people all over northern Nigeria. We have had great, great testimonies that the church in northern Nigeria shall continue to flourish, escape every antics, every program of the devil. The church globally is going through the greatest persecution all over the world at this season. But what the Lord did in the early church by arresting the arrester, that he will arrest the arrester to bring increase and enlargement to his work all over the world. Go ahead, announce it unto the Lord. Announce it to the Lord. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we are so grateful. We bless your name. We worship you. We magnify you. We thank you for your vessel. Thank you for his family. Thank you for that which you have, the ministry that you have committed onto their hands all over the world. Thank you for the testimonies that we have had. Like Paul testified of you, that you delivered him from the mouth of the lion. And you delivered him from every evil works. And you will preserve him unto your heavenly kingdom. Lord, together, himself and everyone that belong to him and all of us, by yourself, you will preserve us unto your heavenly kingdom. Thank you, Father. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that continually you will make him a voice in this generation. You will make him a transgenerational blessing and your hand will continue to be mighty upon him in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Sir, on behalf of all of us in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Rivers Province 3, uh, with the headquarters in Jesus' house and on behalf of the committee of the World Conference, we say a very, very big thank you. 
our sincere appreciation. The Lord bless you, sir. Thank you very much.